You know, I never noticed it until today, but Elisa is just really fondling a pair of big cojones with her left hand right there. <laughs> just look at it. I wonder did the mocap for this character, maybe it was Andy Serkis. I hope he went to Amsterdam and picked up the proper locomotion before he did the work. Anyway, if a vampire mocap by Andy Serkis is lunging for your ball sack like this, trying to squeeze it, then depending on what you're into, you might want to step to the side and avoid her. And so today we're going to talk about uh, stepping and walking in Tekken. This is a huge topic. We're playing pretty much the only popular 3D fighting game in the world. And the fact that you can just move into the background and foreground like this is really huge, but it's kind of underutilized by a lot of players. And one of the most common questions I get on this channel is, when should I step? How do I strategize with stepping? When do I uh, step to set up a whiff punish and so on? And it's honestly kind of difficult to explain because it's not an exact science. It's difficult to give you exact numbers on this because unlike a power crush where I can explain that the armor is going to activate on frame X and so on, your step and your walk is going to depend on what character you're playing because they all do it slightly differently and they all have uh, different sized character models. Some characters are really big and so they're not very good at stepping to the side and they tend to focus on other things. But most medium-sized characters will want to uh, step quite a bit, and it's uh, still very important, no matter what character you play, to know how to strategize against it, when to use uh, moves that have tracking, when to use homing moves, and so on. So I'm going to start with some basics, and we're going to move through uh, some more advanced examples as we go along. But my goal is really to give you uh, you know, parameters for how to start experimenting with stepping and walking, and then you're going to build up your instinct for how how and when to do it as time goes on. I think that's really the best way. So let's first of all explain that uh, while we're playing a 3D game, it's not true 3D in the sense that Elisa can't just turn away and start running towards the hills back there to get away from Katarina. You're sort of tied to your opponent with this uh, invisible elastic band and your uh, opponent is the axle that you're constantly pivoting around or rotating around when you're moving the character models are constantly trying to realign with one another and so you're always moving in relation to the opponent's character right what that means by the way is that you uh, usually want to step uh, or walk a move as late as possible because you want to be as close to them as possible because if you think about it, an example that I've used before, if you're on a merry-go-round or a carousel, I think you call it in Europe, and you're sitting uh, on one of the carts or horses near the center, then you're not going to move very far to make a full rotation around the center, whereas if you're uh, on one of the carts uh, furthest away from the center, you're going to move a really long distance uh, to complete that circle and so the closer you are to the opponent the more evasive your movement becomes and especially when you're trying to move around stuff on the approach it's important to chill and try and step and walk as late as possible the difference between a step and a walk by the way is that a step uh, accelerates faster and it's more evasive faster but a walk while it doesn't accelerate quite as fast allows you to cover more distance because you can go really far you can just keep going for as long as you want really and so there are certain situations where you really want to use a step or a walk you have to use either or but there are also situations where both will work and so to start explaining the most uh, basic sort of scenario when you're going to start experimenting with stepping in my opinion and to show you that stepping and walking are not the same thing I've recorded an example here with Katarina so what she's going to do is she's going to knock me down and then she's going to chase me that's not the uh, correct one we're going to activate this top one up here She's going to knock me down and then she's going to chase me with a running three, which is one of those really powerful uh, approaching tools, gives her plus frames on block, but there are many of these in the game. Peacekeeper from Huarong, uh, Legend Kicks, Slash Kicks, uh, Running Twos, stuff like that. They're uh, extremely, extremely powerful, usually mids, that uh, are completely abusable, except for the fact that they've been balanced in the sense that you can move around them. And so if you don't have stepping and walking in your repertoire, then you're giving your opponent an uh, opportunity to completely abuse a move like that. And so to start moving out of the way of people who are attacking you on the approach is really where I think most players start to learn about stepping. So in this scenario, if I let Katarina uh, knock me down and I attempt stepping into the uh, background here, you can see that I'm going to get caught every single time. Because even though the step is fast, I simply don't cover enough ground to get out of the way of her uh, 
attack here. But if I do the exact same thing and I start walking instead, you can see that I have enough evasion to get completely out of the way of this move. And now I've swung the match completely in my favor because I have my opponent's back and I'm going to whiff punish her for huge damage, right? So that's where I think you should start. And we're going to get on to like stuff like, you know, when to and how to set up whiff punishers with steps in a little bit. But if you're one of those new players who isn't stepping at all uh, yet, then that's uh, a really important uh, place to start. And it's going to allow you, honestly, in my opinion, to breeze past a lot of competition in the lower ranks if you start doing it properly because moves like that are very, very uh, prolific in lower ranks. Uh, but let's move on to slightly more juicy stuff, like uh, how do you set up a whiff punish using a step? And this is where I am going to give you some numbers just for the sake of giving you parameters. Basically, when uh, I look at my character's move list and I try and find out what moves might be good for stepping after, I'm looking for something that is uh, less than minus 5 on block. So minus plus minus 0, of course, and then minus 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, maybe five, but that's usually where I uh, what what I look for, and then I start experimenting with that, and uh, you can have a lot of success. And the reason for that is, we're going to give you an example here. What I've recorded is Katarina doing downward one one into Harrier one, and then she's going to step into a hop kick like this. Harrier one is a move that is, uh, I think, uh, let's double check minus three, right? Yeah, it's minus three. So it falls into that interval where I um, tend to use it for. Um, setting up whiffs on block. So let's see what happens if Katarina does the Harrier 1, uh, I block it and then I do a jab with Elisa. And I'm uh, mashing this jab out to make sure it comes out as soon as possible. And you can see that she's going to comfortably step out of the way right here and launch me with her hop kick. And if I do another one of the typical fast pokes that I would use to uh, take my turn, such as a down forward one, she still gets out of the way. And if I do my fish hook, which is my 12 frame mid, she gets out of the way. So uh, these typical fast poking tools that I will try and open up offense with when it's my turn on block as Elisa, they're going to get avoided and launched here which is very important to note, okay? So that's the reason I uh, say that. Uh, well, let's give you another example to really hammer this home. So if we give you uh, another example of, uh, I think this is going to be Katarina doing a back one, two. Yeah, so this is Katarina doing a back one, two into a hop kick. Back one, two is not minus three, it's minus eight, which is quite a bit more. And so while it is minus and while it is safe, it is a little bit too minus, in my opinion, to be effective in setting up sidestep whiffs. So let's see what happens. It's uh, pretty much the uh, same scenario as before, sidestep into a hop kick. But if I jab with Elisa right here on block, you can see that I have enough time to simply catch her with this jab. She can't step out of the way of it. And if I do a down forward one, even though that's slower, that's still going to catch her. Fish hook is definitely going to catch her. So maybe if we move up to something that is minus 16, like a back three. See right there, this is a back three. This is a linear 16 frame move. Now all of a sudden, uh, Katarina has enough time when she is at minus eight to uh, get out of the way. But I need to do a 16 frame move, which is really slow and it's not really something that you should expect your opponent to do when they're just trying to open up with something because you know launchers start at 15 and people don't just throw out random launchers well of course they do but you know if they're playing proper and they're just trying to open something up it's not usually what they will do right and so uh, that's the reason you want your move to be minus but not too minus when you're trying to set up uh, with punishers with a sidestep Another example that I want to show you is there are a lot of uh, lists and recommendations online for which direction you should step certain characters in, and they're very useful. Uh, but there's no universal truth for which direction you should step uh, a certain character in, because any character is going to have moves that track to both sides. So when you're writing a recommendation like that, you're looking at what the most typical moves in the character repertoire is, and then you decide on the option that is going to evade most of them but just like don't be pissed if you're stepping Kazuya to the left and he still catches you because he definitely has moves that can catch to the left right as a poor choice of words to say right right there but I think you know what I mean so for example I showed you er uh, earlier that a Harrier 1 on block um, is going to and then sidestep into uh, a hop kick is going to evade my jabs and allow Katarina to uh, launch me here. 
And so the first example I showed you, Katarina was stepping to her right. Now she's stepping to her left. And you can see that it's the exact same scenario if I use my one jab. It's the exact same scenario if I use my down forward one. But if I use my fish hook, I can actually catch her here because the fish hook has a mild tracking to uh, that side. And so if you're playing against uh, an Elisa player and you see her you doing a lot of fish hooks trying to interrupt you, then it might be a good idea to keep that in mind and realize that when I step this player, I should probably step to the uh, right and not the left because then I can avoid the fish hook as well. And so this is when it becomes important to look at your opponent and start to uh, notice patterns, notice what kinds of pokes they like to throw out, what they do after another thing. Uh, and then you need to know which side uh, is most effective when it comes to stepping those things, which is really hard. It really requires so much matchup knowledge that, I mean, you can't just sit around and read up on this and then know how to do it. It's going to take you a long time, but when you start, you know, building this up, it's going to get easier and easier as you go along, right? Um, okay, so um, another example that I really want to give you here because I think it's an Im important thing that people miss when they're talking about uh, sidesteps is the fact that w your character models are constantly trying to realign which means that you can create artificial tracking in a number of ways. So if we go back to the uh, initial example here where Katarina is going to do Harrier 1, step to the right and then hop kick like that. Uh, let's show her actually avoiding one of my down forward ones here. That would probably work just fine. So you can see she's going to get out of the way of this down forward one if I mash it out, right? I'm going to mash it out again. She evades, she hop kicks. If I delay it just a little bit, just a little bit, if I don't mash it out but I just give it a couple of frames, I actually have enough time that my move will realign with Katarina and this down forward one will catch her. And so this is one of the ways you can create artificial tracking on pokes with. The other one and a really advanced thing that you will see some really good players do is that they will realign uh, with their opponent using a quick dash uh, to give their poking attacks artificial tracking. So for example in this scenario if I do a quick dash into a down forward one like this because the uh, dash will completely reset the aligning between the two characters, it means that I'm back at 90 degrees, and so my down for one is going to be as consistent as it would be if Katarina hadn't stepped at all, um, at least for the most part. And so this is a advanced technique that is really important to be aware of, where you can actually create uh, tracking using delays and stepping on pokes. So, uh, the step into whiff punish is really most effective when you are uh, looking at an opponent who is going to try and open up offense with a poke right away, like a jab and something like that. And they're not aware that you're going to attempt this step. They must, might also have, you know, a very fast tracking move. You know, maybe you're playing against Kazumi and she's just going to back to you and stuff like that. Okay, another really important thing that I want to illustrate here is that when you're attempting to avoid something with a sidestep, make sure that you're uh, letting the sidestep happen and that it's big and healthy. So in this scenario right here, Katarina is going to do a 1-1-3 and then she's going to uh, sidestep hop kick, right? And this forces crouch. So I'm going to do a while standing 4 here, which is the fastest move I have access to as uh, Elisa. And you can see that she's comfortably going to uh, avoid this and uh, launch me when I do this. However, if I record the exact same scenario uh, and I just stress out the hop kick faster with Katarina, I don't let the full sidestep step happen. I just do the hop kick kind of in the middle of the sidestep. Let's see what happens instead. That's the wrong move. That was maybe a little bit too small. It was uh, really difficult to see. So let's try and get something uh, a little bit slower than that. I think that'll work. So that's uh, the exact same scenario as before, but I sort of interrupted the sidestep halfway with the hop kick. And if we do that, you can see that it's actually not going to work. This uh, while standing forward will now catch Katarina because you need to let the sidestep actually happen and let its uh, evasive properties sort of you know come to bear uh, before you do your whiff punish. And another uh, reason that's important, it's going to give you enough time to actually visually confirm the whiff. Uh, you need to see the whiff before you want to do the whiff punish because if you don't, all you're really doing is throwing out a hop kick that can just be block punished by your opponent if they block it, right? So 
it's important to know when you're stepping that uh, your step is more evasive if you give it enough time to actually like go through its animation uh, because you can uh, interrupt the step anytime you want you can do like a tiny step like that and interrupt it with a jab or you can do a full step uh, into a jab like this and they're uh, completely different in terms of their evasive properties now the uh, next really important application for stepping and walking and we can actually use this string as an example again but we're gonna do a full step that'll work um, is that there are a lot of strings in this game that will give you an opportunity to escape them with a step or a walk usually to a specific side uh, one really good example of that is back one two uh, four with Elisa this move this move is pretty abusable and, and kind of good for like uh, counter hits with uh, Elisa but if your opponent knows that they can just walk that final kicking attack to the side and launch her then it becomes very very dangerous to use and another example of this is this great 1-1-3 string with Katarina that I use with Katarina a lot to set up um, hop kicks after a sidestep, by the way, because it's plus minus zero on block. But if my opponent predicts and knows that they can just do this, then, you know, Katarina is the one who's going to get launched. And so this is an example of a move that is, or a string that is escapable if you know how and when to uh, step it. And then you're going to launch your opponent again, right? So... It's so another uh, thing that's going to require a lot of matchup knowledge. You need to identify these strings and you need to memorize them and it's going to take time. So what I recommend you do with this is when you're watching matches online, when you're playing against good players on uh, online, and you see somebody pull something like this off, remember that it's possible maybe go into practice mode and try doing it yourself and then you're going to uh, start uh, to be able to actually implement yourself in matches because when somebody's doing one of these powerful abusable strings like this like I mean 113 is fantastic plus minus zero on block sets up counter hits sets up side steps it's really really important to know how to deal with this another thing you can do by the way is you can uh, jab her out of it now I'm giving you anti Katarina tech but Anyway, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Very, very important to know that there are uh, opportunities for you to uh, step or walk out of the way of your opponent when they are applying strings, and it comes down to matchup knowledge. So these are just some parameters uh, I wanted to give you when it comes to uh, starting to experiment with stepping and walking. And I think really the most important uh, thing to keep in mind is go to your move list, find some cool, useful moves that are you know plus minus zero or minus one, two, three, four, maybe five and start attempting, you know, a sidestep, look to visually confirm a whiff and then do a cool whiff punish, you know, get a combo. If it seems to be useful enough, then start uh, taking it online, start applying it, and I think you'll see results quite quickly. And sidesteps really are one of those things where they look advanced when you see other people doing them, but when you start doing them yourself, low parries are the exact same way. It's kind of like a big mechanical click in your head, and then they just start becoming really intuitive really fast. So you want to break through that barrier as soon as as possible because it's really going to aid your development as a player. I think that's everything I wanted to say in this video. I hope it was uh, comprehensive and useful enough. Uh, but thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you again very soon.